Oh, what kind of where are we? All right. Um, so this week we have a quorum. So <laughs> um, this week it's uh, my job to to call us to order. So um, as we have a quorum, I think we can get started. And then I need to read our virtual meeting statement. Apologies, I'm working from two different devices this week, so <laughs> please bear with me. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Uh, see instructions below. No, one in, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, and then also before we go any further, Jennifer, I just wanted to uh, ask if there's anybody else who needs to be let in. Um, no, not at this moment, but what time did you start the meeting at? I'm so sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm a little bit early. Should I wait? No. I just started. Okay. Uh, 13 or 158. Okay. We're running early. That's a good sign, guys. I like that. Or a good sign people. Sorry, <laughs> guys, maybe not the most PC. <laughs> And do we, is Dr. Shabazz here? I, I don't know if my screen view is, okay. Just wanted to make sure my screen. No, view. but I will make um, Dr. Jemison and you, Michelle, co-hosts. Okay. Oh, exciting. Okay. Oh, woo. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Jennifer, do you know, did he RSVP no? So we're not expecting him or? I have not heard, um, okay. not everybody, you know, depending Uses. on your device is with that calendar invite. So absolutely. Um, okay. I have not heard. Great. But I can share the agenda. Oh, wonderful. And then I think I get to uh, kick it over to you, Michelle. Um, yes. Although I think we need to approve. Oh, we do. Um, from last meeting. If, if, uh, we could do that. I, I do have one small correction to make just in the spelling of my name. Um, it's Michelle with one L. Um, so that would be great if that could be corrected. Okay. And can we approve with the correction pending or do we push that off till next week? No. When? Okay. You, you can approve with it pending. We just need the motion. And Absolutely. Someone to second. Well, first, any other, sorry, I should ask if there are any other comments. Did anyone have any other corrections uh, or changes to last week's meeting minutes? All right, hearing none, <laughs> um, I motion that we approve uh, the minutes of 928-2021. Lord, second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, and we need to do roll call because we are virtual. Um, uh, Michelle? Aye. Uh, Irv? Aye. Uh, Hala? Lord, aye. Um, and Jemison, aye. And Alexis is here too, yeah. Oh, okay, wonderful, sorry. You dropped off my screen when I changed my view. <laughs> Alexis? Hi. Hi, all right, <laughs> thank you. Great. Yes. Okay. So without that out of the way, we can move on to our public comment period. So we are going to invite members of the public to speak for up to three minutes. And we will not be responding to public comment, but we will be listening and making notes. So if there's anyone who would like to speak, please raise your hand and Jennifer um, will let you in. You're muted, but I think that's maybe you telling me to start. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hi everybody, uh, this is Anna Dublin Gothier. I'm on Bay Road, District 5. And uh, I wanted to do a quick public comment. Um, hi to those I have not had the honor of meeting yet. And 
Um, I was recently this week, Paul actually was there too at the new food bank farm out in Hadley, um, which is a pretty incredible, incredible resource to our community. And one of the things that they had talked about doing with some of the land that they um, have acquired is, uh, I think they're going to lease it. I'm not sure how their, their specific arrangement is working, but specifically to, um, to block farmers in an effort to start to kick off a little bit around land reparations around agriculture. Um, and so it got me thinking, I'm also on the Community Preservation Act uh, Committee, and one of the things that the Community Preservation Act Committee can do is use funds from CPA to purchase land for agricultural use. So my pitch to you is to consider in a future meeting, maybe having some folks from CPA come and talk to you about what those funds could be used for, and if that's something that folks in Amherst would ever be uh, interested in pursuing around specifically land reparations for agricultural use. Um, I'm happy to, to support you in kind of how to move through that CPA process to the best of my ability as I'm a member of the committee and um, need to make sure that that stays there too. Yeah, that was my very rushed apologies for if, I hope that made sense. I know you can't ask me any questions, but like, you know, let me know if there's anything that didn't make sense about that. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank you. <clears throat> Jennifer, do you see any other raised hands? Do I have a way of seeing that, by the way? Um, let's see here. Okay, I don't see anything. <laughs> do you? So if you click on panel on the participants at the bottom of your screen, they should show up. You yeah. should have an attendees and a panelist. Do you see that? I do see that. Yeah. Yeah. So when someone's hands raised, it'll be yellow. Okay, so right now there aren't any other hands raised, so I think we can go ahead and move on um, to the agenda. Uh, and so we are going to be taking the action and discussion items portion of the meeting a bit out of order. Um, Dr. Jemison and I tried to group things in a way that felt like it would flow best for our discussion. So we're gonna get started by revisiting assembly agreements and meeting guidelines, which is um, A under our action and discussion items. And Dr. Jemison and I spoke about um, the, uh, the benefit of taking a few minutes here as we're getting to know each other. It's our third meeting and co-creating some community guidelines as a group. And so I did a little bit of research. Um, Jennifer had provided some excellent um, community agreements, which you can find in our first packet, I believe. Um, and I also think that um, Irv provided some very useful community guidelines um, that are used within the BAM group. Um, I took some um, really great information from a group called National Equity Project. So just to kind of give us a little foundation for this, um, part of our work here as a committee is to try to build consensus. And so a consensus on what every person in our group needs from each other and commits to each other in order to feel safe, supported, open, productive, and trusting so that we can serve our community, do our best work and achieve our common vision. And I liked what they said about agreements. Agreements are an aspiration or collective vision for how we want to be in relationship with one another. They are explicitly developed and enforced by the group, not by an external authority, and as such must represent a consensus. So a couple questions that they suggest posing for us to think about are, what things would make this committee work what things would make this committee work well for you? And what makes this a safe and respectful place for us to work in? So these are two questions that we may um, think about. We don't have to spend a lot of time on this, but if maybe each one of us has something that we can offer um, that um, we agree on um, as a consensus to work within. And uh, Dr. Jemison, if you have anything to add to that. I love these questions. I look forward to hearing 
anyone who would like to share an answer today. So yeah, we'll open it up and see if there are any suggestions um, or any any share at all in relation to this. If it will make people more comfortable, <laughs> if somebody else shares first. Um, I know something I've been thinking about a lot is um, sort of issuing an invitation and, and asking people to bring themselves and their expertise to this meeting in a really active way. Um, you know, one of the things I said when running for co-chair is that I, I'm not the expert on this topic. And so what I'm, you know, I'm here because I'm interested and I'm here to digest ideas and uh, help us push and, and pull at them. So I hope that folks who know more about this topic or know more about various pieces of it will, will step up. Um, if, if you wanna be invited, if you wanna be asked, I'm asking you now, <laughs> please bring uh, all of your skills and talents uh, to this meeting. And, and hopefully I'd just love to see uh, everyone sort of jump in and, uh, and really contribute as fully as they can. Wonderful. Anyone else like to share? Well, I'll, um, I'll say that one of the things that's important to me is um, feeling that there is a level of respect as we're working together. Um, and I think, um, and this applies both in how we work with each other, but also how we are working within the community context um, to as best as possible, not talk about personalities or about people, you know, individually or directly. Um, that would be something that would, that is important to me um, to keep this a safe and respectful place. I guess I can sh make a, a quick share. Yes, Am I please. audible? Yes, you are. Please continue. So this is a document that we use in an intergroup dialogue process that I'm a part of called Bridge for Unity. Um, and it's adapted from something from the Anti-Defamation League. But as you can see, the little memory device or memory trick is to call it the ropes, knowing the ropes. And, um, and just some of the points raised within it, I think are part of making for um, a space that, where we can do the, the kind of work we're, we're here to do. And, uh, and I just would particularly highlight, um, I try to, I try to work on the step up and step back uh, to be aware of the space that I, that I use and, and working to create space for others. That's one I particularly uh, work on. I think um, Michelle was just talking about the need to speak for ourselves. Don't you know, speak in ways that we you know, want to generalize or, 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 or point at other, other people to, but rather using I statements um, and then the ouches and oops, you know, that can happen any, in any kind of group uh, dialogue process, any kind of group meetings is that you can, you can have uh, situations come up and we ought to be able to, to be able to say, oops, that's not what I meant. And then also to acknowledge the ouch if someone else took it a certain way. So anyway, I can send that to uh, Jennifer to share out, but um, that's what I wanted to add. That's really helpful, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. That would be wonderful if we could share that out. Are there any other comments or shares? Herb, were you about to speak? I don't know if I caught caught that wrong. Uh, no, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Well, I guess I just would um, sort of round this out by saying that this is, I think we're all here because this is um, work that we feel really um, passionate about and committed to, and it's critical work. And part of it is um, there, there is emotional labor um, that we're all doing here and emotions will arise as we're doing this work together. So just um, doing our best to stay connected to one another, even as emotions may arise um, and caring for each other um, as we do this work. So, um, if there aren't any other comments on this, then we can go ahead and move on and I will be um, handing it back to Dr. Jemison. All right, um, uh, either Jennifer or Michelle, would one of you be able to uh, share the agenda? <laughs> I think our next topic is this screening, but. Yes, that's right. <laughs> awesome, so we decided we would go to, uh, if you could, Scroll up a little bit, Jennifer. I think our next topic is actually going to be uh, F um, to handle that uh, quickly. So, um, one of the reasons we're going out of order is to possibly take items uh, that we could sort of vote on or uh, have a disposition for pretty quickly and then leave the bulk of the time for items which require more discussion at the end. So, um, we were approached by a group in Boston. Um, that has developed a documentary uh, called A Reckoning in Boston. And uh, they, um, they wanted, they're basically offering us an opportunity to possibly have a, a screening of this film and then use it as a, a point of discussion. Um, this came up this week. And so I just kind of wanted to share it with you. So I can read a description and is this email in the packet as well? I just don't recall. It's got yeah. a long packet. Okay, so there is a link in there where you could view the trailer. Um, and so what I was hoping is we could basically, if folks had looked at this and had an opinion, we could hear it. If not, encourage everybody to sort of think about whether this might be a good and community option uh, for us and if we'd be interested and then we can perhaps move it to a vote uh, next week if we're not ready this week. So. Um, if you didn't look at this uh, briefly, there's a little bit of a description in here. Yes. Um, so this film explores the history and lived experiences of racism within communities of color facing systemic oppression in Boston, as well as demonstrating how community members seek to define their lives beyond these systems. It also opens a critical dialogue about whiteness and complicity as the filmmaker James Rutenbeck works to understand his role while filming parts of the daily lives of two black Bostonians. Um, as I said, there's a link to the trailer and we can sort of provide that after the fact, but did anyone take get a chance to take a look at this and did they have any thoughts about it? Or have they heard of it in other channels? I had a chance to take a quick um, look at it and uh, you know, this is an interesting opportunity, I think for us. Um, and it may be something that we could consider um, pitching even to Amherst Cinema to do in collaboration. Um, but the way I kind of look at it is that any engagement or participation or work that's being done around reparations is worth us seriously considering um, synergizing within. So, um, thoughts. Thank you, Michelle. Any other thoughts about perhaps more broadly, you know, a topical film and uh, sort of talk back afterwards and community engagement as a, as a tool to have the community, you know, see these issues and get discussing them? Oh, Hala, yes. Yes, um, thank you. This is, I'm definitely for us doing it more broadly in the community, but it also got me thinking about 
if we could budget some of our funds to um, document our process. I know we're not right at the beginning, but will we be able to have a documentary of a filmed? And I know some people in our community and in BAM do that. So that's just a suggestion that maybe we want to also document what we're doing here in Amherst one day for others to use. But yes, I also support showing this to the community and having a talk back. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Alexis. Um, that's, I am, I am inspired by what Hala just was talking about. Um, I, I, I'm very interested in, in helping out in doing that if people are interested in, in doing that. Um, because I, yeah, the, the film stuff is kind of in my, in my wheelhouse. So I am definitely interested in that and can contribute to the creation of that if people are interested in doing that. That is awesome. Uh, glad to hear both of those things. I like the idea and um, love something coming together on that. So uh, I would like to ask everyone on the, the committee to do two things. I, well, yeah. Um, one, please take a look at this trailer uh, and come next week prepared to say like, yes or no, if you're interested in doing uh, something with this film specifically in this community. And then we can sort of get some folks to maybe uh, spin that up. And then uh, I don't know how you can do this, <laughs> but um, uh, Alexis, Hala, since you, you, you had this idea and inspired by this idea, um, maybe you could sort of individually come with sort of like a proposal, what, you know, what you think that might look like or just a little bit of language so we could have that next week. And then maybe we could also um, put that to a vote as to whether or not that's something we'd like to work on. All right, um, thank you. Um, yes, please, Dr. Shabazz. Jimmy, on this one, I don't know that we have to necessarily kick, kick the can. Um, okay. The you know it 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 looks to me of of of, of educational value. Um, I can't see the rest of the letter. Is there a cost associated with it? Are they offering to be on hand for the uh, you know for the screening or or zooming in or something? Um, what is or are they is it going to be airing on PBS? I saw PBS in the in the subject line. Is it just kind of getting a getting an advance look? before it, it drops on PBS? Is there, do we know any more about the, 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 the context for us doing a screening here? Yeah, and I think um, I, they did not uh, mention any costs associated with it. Those are all excellent questions. Um, they did not mention any costs associated with it. They did uh, uh, say that the, the director and um, uh, the producer who reached out and uh, Dr. Fernanda Ona are available to come to screening. So they were they're sort of asking if we were interested in coordinating one. Um, so if if there is enough interest for this, um, I think what I would most like is someone who's willing to be the leader on on you know researching this and getting it to getting it to happen. Oh, Irv, you've raised your hand. Yeah. My I, I, I watched the trailer and I think it's an incredible film and opportunity. However, uh, what I couldn't determine was the amount of time uh, that this would take as A and B, if we're going to do a screening with discussion and have a person come out, um, then that is something that I'm really not in favor of. I'm in favor of having this information, but I am not in favor of taking time uh, in one of our meetings to do this, if it's going to take any more than 15 minutes. Uh, we just don't have that time to spare in terms of the work that we have ahead of us. Thank you, I, uh, I agree. I, I was not um, anticipating, my vision of this had been that he was approaching this group to facilitate a meeting or a screening that was perhaps more of a community event, as opposed to us necessarily watching it and giving feedback during 
this meeting time, because I agree with you, this meeting time is absolutely precious. So um, how does, does that feel more useful? Because if it were just a community event, you would obviously be invited, but not necessarily required to come. You know, it, you know um, I think that this is something that uh, would be really good to take up with Amherst Cinema uh, in terms of screening. I think that's a more appropriate venue for it. Uh, and it also could be a part of what we do, uh, but not necessarily something that we are taking the lead in. Okay. I would be happy, Dr. Jemison, to get in touch with these folks and Amher Cinema and see if there's some um, collaboration that would be possible and then bring that and report that information back to the group at a, at a future meeting. That'd be great. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. If there are there any other comments on this before we move to our next topic? All right, I'm going to take silence as no, nothing else there. <laughs> so Michelle, I think it's back over to you. Yes, um, so now we're looking at E under our action and discussion items, public engagement. And, um, you know, one of the themes that I'm seeing, particularly in this campaign season, is a lot of discussion around the need for more public engagement. And how do we reach people? How do we get people to engage with our work? Um, and how do we do it in ways that are accessible and equitable? And so um, this part of the discussion is to brainstorm some ways that we can be sure we are reaching as many folks in the community as possible. Um, and also, how are we taking the information that we're receiving from the public and integrating that and making sure that um, those voices are being, you know, uh, heard and uplifted as we do our work. So that's an open discussion, open for any suggestions people may have. Um, and go. <laughs> Well, one discussion uh, point that I've been bringing up a couple times over the last meetings is I am in favor of having a public comment period at the beginning and at the end of the meeting. And I understand that that could <clears throat> add a little bit to our meetings, especially if we're getting through a long meeting. Um, but I think that the opportunity for people to comment after they've listened to the meeting or if they haven't been able to get there at the start of the meeting, they still have that opportunity. Um, I don't know if we have to put that to a motion to vote on um, or if it's just a discussion about splitting the public comment period and um, adding that onto our agenda. Jennifer or um, Paul, if you have any thoughts on that, it would be great. Yes, yeah, so I think the, um... If the if the committee wants to do it, you can just vote to do it, or you can do, the co chairs can choose to do it. But I think it's best for the for the committee to say yes, this is how we want to conduct our meetings. Yeah, great. Before we sort of go on to to voting on that, um, something else that I was interested in is: Are there ways for us to elicit commentary from the public that are not at this meeting? For example, if you know. We produce minutes every week. Uh, if there were ever a, a, a document, like we're supposed to come up with a little bit of our plan to share, is that something that we can solicit written comments about or, or some other ways that we can, can get them? Yes, Paul. Yeah, so, so certainly. So I think anytime you want to reach out to the public, we can help you know, through Jennifer or communications department, we can help 
put that out there. If you're saying we're looking for feedback from people, even if it's not a public hearing, but we have this new proposal, we've just posted a document that we'd like you to know, know about. We can help do that through, we have different notice either beginning with our putting on the website, but also we can push it out into to people who have subscribed to our different digital assets. And uh, for certain things, it can also, it might migrate over into our social media, uh, Twitter and Facebook accounts as well. So yeah, there's lots of opportunities for that. I think, um, you know, I think, it, you know, your, your meetings get, um, when they're posted, that gets distributed to members who have subscribed to every meeting. So people get notice of that, but if there's something in particular, you say, pay attention to us now. I think that's a really useful um, opportunity to say, we wanna put something together and here's what we'd like to have put out there. Thank you. Um, and other people jump in here, but also Michelle, I, I was actually wondering, so you make good points about people who couldn't join at the beginning um, or other things, but I was also wondering, is there feedback you've received somehow or like during your other process before we got to this committee that makes you feel like there there are voices that want to be heard that are somehow not finding either finding their way to our meetings or not able to connect um yeah uh, who are we not hearing yeah i think it's you know it's difficult for people to tune in to everything that's going on in the town. And I only just learned about the subscriber, um, which is, by the way, something, if you don't know about it, it's a wonderful feature of the town website um, where you can go on and you can subscribe to receive notifications by text or by email about literally everything that's happening. Um, now, my phone is getting a lot of activity since I signed up, but I will tell you, I feel much more in the know and I can silence things that I don't want, like I can go back and turn things off. So I'd like to do my part, at least um, through my Facebook platforms to let people know about that opportunity to engage. Um, but specifically with our committee, um, I think that this is a really important topic that a lot of people care about. And I wanna make sure that as many voices as possible are brought to the table as we're doing this work. Um, so I think generally like the input is that people feel like they either can't attend meetings or they can't find where a meeting is after it's been recorded or things like that. And so any ways that we can try to streamline, there is so much available. Engage Amherst is another excellent website people can go on to. So it's just a matter um, you know, for us getting it out through our channels to people um, that we're doing this work and um, yeah. Yeah, Jennifer. So I hear you guys speaking about how to get our information or your information out to the public, but I think that we still need to figure out how the public is going to get information to you all, how they will receive that. So I know that like the CSWG does public forums, um, but we still have to factor in that some folks aren't going to be able to attend those. And so someone might just come up with an idea and they're going to need to know who to send that idea to, whether it be email or a phone call. So I think that's what needs to be um, hashed out. Paul, yes. Yeah, so I think um, I think Jen is right, but also um, Michelle mentioned the Engage Amherst. And so that's an, another uh, platform. You know, we try to have as many, it, there's no one obvious good place, right? Engage Amherst is a different type of platform where people can, um, you can have a presence there um, people can make comments. It's a public dialogue ongoing that that stores the questions and the comments. And so people might say, well, what does reparations mean? And then the designated person will respond to that. And that lives there sort of as a library of questions that people may ask. So we could work on setting that up um, you know, as a separate location. We've used that for about a half a dozen things like Hickory Ridge most recently, um, you know, different projects that we have ongoing. But I think it'd be a really good place. And actually, um, to Alexis's point, it, it sort of creates a sort of um, historical record as well of, of the development of what happened and gives you an opportunity to 
um, put out, you know, you can keep updating it on a regular basis. So we can work with you to do that if that's something that committee is interested in. I am. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else uh, on the committee have thoughts about that? I thought I was muted, sorry. <laughs> um, so again, I, you know, I'm always looking or trying to think about that person who doesn't necessarily want to have their comments on a mm. public. I mean, I know that it becomes public, but if they have a specific question, perhaps they don't want to ask that on that public platform in that manner, because um, it does become public. But also, uh, so I'm not sure if, if some like if someone should be a designated person to for you know the CSWG has a lot of people who have submitted different information that was very helpful and resources to them. So. I'm thinking of a platform in, in that manner. Um, yeah, Alexis. Um, I guess I'm just wondering how that forum is moderated. Um, oh. Yeah, if anyone can speak. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, Alexis, I didn't hear it. Just how that forum or how those forums are moderated. Maybe Paul, um, are you speaking about the forum on the Engage Amherst, Alexis? Like where a question could be posed, what is reparations, for example? That, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, maybe Paul can speak to that. Yeah, so, so usually there, um, we have a person that is identified as the person that, that's responding to that particular thing so that people know who they're, who's responsible for responding to that. Um, that may say be Jennifer um, or whoever we designate for that. Um, but it would, you know, clearly the co-chairs will want to have, you want your, your, probably your leadership being the people who are putting the content up. Well, I mean, I guess I'm speaking more to like, if there's, for example, impolite comments. Oh, yeah. So I think there are, I'd have to look, I, I'm pretty sure we have some standards, some protocols for that's a really good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just I would have to we'd have to talk to our um, communications manager who manages that site. There must be some um, terms of engagement there. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, um, just to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying, you're thinking about also another way where people could get to a designated point person in this group. They could submit whatever it was, but it's just sort of one to one, um, and I personally would be fine with that. Um, I, Michelle, I don't know how you feel about that or if anybody else you know, wanted to be the point person, but I, as, as someone who would like to invite written comments, I feel like I have to at least <laughs> step forward and say I'd be willing to receive those, so. Yeah, I think that's great. If you would be willing to receive those, um, you know, they can certainly be sent to, to both co-chairs or just to you, I'm totally fine with that. And um, do, does the community safety working group, um, Jennifer, have like uh, an email that is community safety working group at, at Amherst? Yeah. I wonder if the group thinks that would be beneficial to have an email that would then come to all of us, but it's not a, an individual person. So that way, if anybody wants to put a general comment, they can send it to that email address and we would all see it. We would just have to be really cognizant, I think, about um, reply, not replying <laughs> um, to the emails. So just receiving them as if they were being received here in a meeting. Um, I think that that, no matter what, would be helpful to have. Um, and then maybe, Jennifer, if someone specifically says to you or to Paul, like, we have a question, we'd like to have a one-on-one, -on -one, then they can send those directly to Dr. Jemison. So um, the CSWG the emails come in, they go to everyone, and only the co-chairs respond Great. to the okay. emails. That makes sense. Um, often it's lots of resources and, you know, like dear CSWG, you know, I was looking and found this resource or that resource that might be helpful. Um, l less about commentary, but more either support, general support for the mission and 
um, also uh, just resources. So that's what it's mainly been. And then if there is an email address, then I would suggest that that would be put on the page so that people can go and submit it that way. That would be great. Perfect, yeah. One other piece I just wanted to touch on here that um, when Anna spoke, it made me think about how do we take um, a really valuable public comment like that um, about something she learned at the food bank and about a possibility for you know the, this um, land for black farmers. How do we take that and move it into action? You know, so is there um, potentially a time that we can allocate in our meetings um, to identify a person who may want to take a particular item up that came in through public comment? and follow up with it and get more information to bring back to the group. Yes, Jennifer. So typically I think what would need to happen is it would be put on the next agenda if the group felt like that would be something to discuss and then it could be discussed at the next agenda and you could, if you wanted to, invite the individual back to speak during that time. Does that sound about right, Paul? <laughs> Great. So do we need to vote on the groups, the email address and the public comment? There's a little bit more behind the email address because okay. you have to kind of figure out where that email address is coming from. And is it, you know, um, so that is a little, well, something that the co-chairs, Paul, and probably myself would talk about a little bit more in detail. Okay. Um, but the piece about the public comment and moving that next piece forward can just be sent in or you can submit for one of the agenda items or the group can decide to vote on it. Dr. Demison, did you mean the public comment before, like at the beginning and end of the meeting, that piece? Okay. Yeah, so I, I meant all of the pieces. So it sounds like having an email address that or email distribution that comes to everyone, but you and I answer Sounds like that needs a little more conversation. Um, I understand that there's a, I'm sorry, I don't remember the acronyms, but there's a bulletin board or a, there's a sort of bulletin board that we could be a part of. Yeah. Right. I was wondering if we need to vote on that and, I'm, and also on your uh, suggestion of a public comment, uh, both before and after. I think I what I heard is that if we wanted, if there weren't any objections to adding the public comment, then the co-chairs could add that onto the agenda. Um, and I'm sorry, I misspoke. I think um, the subscription piece was different than what you're talking about, which is being on Engage Amherst, um, yeah. and whether or not we want to um, go forward with that. I think based on what Alexis brought up is such a good point. And uh, maybe we want to, as we explore this other email thing with Paul and Jennifer, talk a little bit more about that and what safety um, pieces we can put in place to make sure that that's um, going to work, um, you know, to support us as opposed to, <laughs> yes, Paul. So, so maybe that's for your next agenda, we can get good sort of how to connect with the reparation, the reparation assembly, like how to talk to us, how we will talk to you, sort of get some options out there for you to consider at your next meeting. And that could be the Engage Amherst, your website, uh, email, whatever, you know, if, if you're gonna do a public forum where people are gonna be engaged, throw so some options out there for, that'll be a little more structured discussion for you. Sounds great. Okay. Great, thank you. So if there aren't any more comments on this piece, um, then we would be moving to G under action and discussion items, uh, BAM's engagement with the assembly. We had previously talked about this. And I think the main thinking on adding this onto the agenda is just to really solidify whether we feel like the three members that are here as part of BAM are sufficient or if there was additional um, were additional methods of engaging or wanting to engage that group. Yes, um, <laughs> the I would note that among our attendees uh, is a um, another uh, founding 
uh, member of the Black Assembly of Amherst, uh, Kathleen Anderson. Um, the uh, meeting for, uh, we, we've been meeting monthly, so our next meeting hasn't occurred to, uh, to really process how, um, whether the, the BAM itself wants to send a delegate beyond us. But so I think for the time being, there really isn't a, a need to vote on that right now. As you say, we have uh, people here who are members of it. And so um, we, we don't have to necessarily um, take action uh, on that item until after BAM itself meets and thinks about, uh, you know, how, uh, whether, whether they confer upon us, if you will, um, the, uh, the, that role of liaising with, um, with uh, this, this group, this body, or whether they feel um, someone besides us ought to be uh, uh, liaising. So I would just say we can, we can table that for now. I don't know if um, Irv or Hala or, or even Kathleen would have a different view of that. But uh, I will say um, one other thing on the piece is the real work that BAM um, offers is to be a conduit to the African heritage community, the people of African descent in Amherst. And the strategy of how to become that conduit uh, involved this creation of this, this census, this listing with um, contact points, whether ground mail addresses, whether email addresses, whether cell phone, number, phone numbers of some form, and right now, that work has not really proceeded very much within BAM beyond uh, word of mouth contact to people and uh, uh, the, the attempt to kind of uh, gather names uh, through, through that more uh, informal method. Um, the step that is needed and has been called upon and asked about for some months is to be able to um, uh, uh, get uh, a, a website and some means of reaching out to people, create it, uh, someone uh, with time or someone hired to look at things like voter rolls and, and work with people to go through to try to identify from existing uh, 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 databases uh, the African uh, heritage people who live, who are resident of Amherst, and uh, then following up with contact to people on that list saying, are you okay being a part of this, this assembly, this, this census, this, uh, this process of communication? You know, if, um, uh, if, if this assembly, if this body is choosing to uh, take the time above and beyond the planning work that we're actually charged to do, if we're interested in now becoming that conduit and that we'll set up all these channels for information and people to, to send information in and flow in, if, if this group thinks to do that itself, then um, I can bring that to BAM and we'll talk about it at our November meeting. There's really no reason for us to continue to exist if this, if this body thinks it can do that work itself of, of identifying the African heritage community and reaching out to it about this reparative justice process and, um, and, and soliciting its, its ideas. So I just wanna put that out openly and, uh, and, and, and seek ideas uh, uh, um, from, 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 from this body about that. Thank you for uh, laying that out so clearly, uh, Dr. Shabazz. And um, I think that actually dovetails with our next topic. <laughs> um, I, I don't wanna rush away from this though, if other folks um, have uh, thoughts or responses to uh, Dr. Shabazz's comments. Er? I, uh, I don't want to... Uh let hang out there what uh, Dr. Shabazz just said, because it's very important. Uh, we need 
to have that work done. We cannot leave it just sitting there. Either we will take up that task or BAM will do it. Uh, either way, resources are gonna need to be um, put um, to that task. So whenever we uh, want to deal with it, we have to deal with it. And I would assume that we would deal with that sooner than later. Thank you, Irv Alexis. Um, yeah, I I completely agree. I think that this is something that's directly tied to what we do in that it's that I, I don't think that, you know, that it's so vital that we maintain a connection and that we we, you know do the work to go out there and connect with the community um, in order to know how best to serve it um, in doing this work. So I I third this, if that's what this is, and I, because I, I agree, I think it's really important in that I have some um, knowledge as to like, you know, getting a website built and stuff like that and, and knowing how to facilitate that process so I can help with with doing that. So I wonder if, um, because our next topic is going to be um, Dr. Jemison's proposal on our work process, I think probably what she meant about this dovetailing is that if we want to get a couple people together um, to further explore this in between our meetings and then report back. And I'm not, I'm sorry to speak for you, Dr. Jemison, but I think that's what you were getting at. Um, so perhaps um, I do see Irv's hands up and then maybe we can move to the work process and it will sort of fall into place there where we can um, continue that piece. You're muted, Irv. Uh, what I was, I, I guess, <laughs> I was going to say a point of order here, uh, because if this is going to be an action item, it's an action item. It's not an action item, it's not an action item. So we don't need to dis uh, discuss it unless we're going to come to, uh, we want to have a vote on it. If we're going to have a vote on it, let's say that it's an action item. Yeah, I appreciate that. And given we've sort of extended beyond the item that was indicated on our agenda, perhaps we want to add this to our next agenda, because what I'm hearing is that it's a really important piece of what we need to do to move forward. And so my feeling is that there isn't a vote on anything today that we need to do a little bit um, more discussion around this in the light that Dr. Shabazz just brought forward. Um, so we can add that, Dr. Jemison, and I can add that to next week's or next meeting's ag agenda. Um, yes, Dr. Shabazz. If I could just ask Kala, is that okay, this idea to the original agenda item of just deferring the question of a BAM uh, liaison being a non-voting member, just deferring that for now until BAM itself can meet and until we can have this work process discussion? Is that okay with, is that do you agree That's, with that? Yeah, that feels good. That feels okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I think to the original agenda item, I think we're the we're, we're taking no action. We're saying we're going to table that for now and come back to it. Irv? Uh, just, this is, um, anyway, work has been done on, on this in relationship to um, identifying source of money to do the um, census as well as to uh, uh, compile additional information that's necessary for BAM uh, to do a website, et cetera. That, that work has been done. And, um, and Dr. Shabazz uh, uh, led that work. So at some point, either we're gonna, and, and I guess I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated, I'm thinking, if we're gonna do this, we need to come to a decision quickly and get it done and get move it off of our uh, agenda so the work is in process. I really don't want to discuss this ad infinitum. Thank you for uh, offering that additional information about work that's already been done and resources and also expressing your frustration. I, I 
thank you for pointing out that this is a safe space where people can hear that. Um, I, I don't think we're trying to prolong the discussion. The next item that is on the agenda is, in, is a space where I outlined all the tasks I think that need to be done for us to get this entire project done. And one of them is about identifying the population, which is to me dovetails, it like is exactly what the census would do. And so what I didn't wanna do is have us vote on this single item alone when there might be other items that come out of all of this work process that, that need to vote. So um, we're not trying to delay for multiple weeks. We're just trying to delay till we have a little more discussion about everything we need to do so we can make sure uh, that, that things get done efficiently and effectively. So I think that's a good time maybe for us um, to move into that portion of, of the meeting. And Dr. Jemison, I just wanted to ask you, do you want me to share, um, or Jennifer could, because it's in the packet, what you, like the, the presentation as it was typed up? That would be perfect. Yes, okay. just, I realize it's a lot of words, but <laughs> that's, I only had a phone at the time that I was doing this. Okay. Jennifer, do you want to share that or do you want me to do that? No, I can share. Just Great. one moment, please. I, it's probably easier for me to scroll down and find it versus scrolling down while you guys, it's on the screen. I know the feeling, Jennifer. I just had to <laughs> do the same search so I could make sure I had my own reference. So. Okay. Do you see the document and not my millions of... I do, excellent. Perfect. All right, um, so I will give a little background um, just so people know where this came from and sort of how my brain works. Um, I wanted to understand the scope of what we needed to do and try to break that down into tasks so that hopefully we could start to work um, as ones or twos on this to kind of like go out every week, get a little bit more information, bring it back to the group so that we could do we could make more things action items and have more votes and move forward you know, faster that way. Um, I did number and letter things because that's the way my brain works. I'm not saying we have to do these things in these orders, they're just buckets that I made. Um, so the first bucket is the money bucket. Um, how do we secure funding for the 2023 budget and beyond? Um, and what I put under here are all the things I thought we needed to understand to go do those tasks. And then bucket number two was understanding the legal concerns. There's a lot of information that came up this week, um, some of which I hope we'll have time to discuss after this part. And again, the sort of several items that I think we need to understand before we make decisions on that. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit, Jennifer, so we can see three and four if they'll fit on the screen? Uh, so number three would be a visioning process. Uh, does that that bucket, you know, does that happen now? Does that happen with a couple of people on the side and bringing some ideas? Um, but these are the, you know, these are things that I suggested could go in that bucket. Um, and then number four. Uh, determine eligibility for reparations. This is the bucket where particularly B and C understand past, present and projected populations or understand the potential size of a population to receive reparations. That sounds exactly like the work that was just being discussed um, that has been initiated by BAM. And so I think it makes perfect sense to bring that, at least the question of whether or not we're going to bring that under our umbrella into the conversation. And then can we just look at five quickly, Jennifer, before we go back to the top? Um, so define how reparations will be distributed. Um, once, you know, we kind of have to know what they are before we know how they're, and who's getting them before we know how they're, they're going to be distributed. So there is some linearity to how this works. Um, but, uh, yeah, that and then the final thing was to prepare and present the outcomes of this work in a report, or maybe it's a documentary um, based on some earlier discussions. So could we go back to the top and just sort of look at one and two for a moment? Um, 
uh, in when Jennifer sent this out, she sent it out with my food for thought comments, which was things like, hey, you know, what are the parts of this that you'd like to get involved with? What do you where do you feel your skill sets lie? Um, but the, the first thing I would want to ask here, as always, is did I miss anything for folks who reviewed this ahead of time or are looking at it now? Are there steps here that I missed? I know I may have gotten some of the words wrong, but in general, is there any task that I missed here? Irv. I, I think you really did a great job in um, outlining the tasks that are to be done. Uh, well, I would like to add a comment that um, uh, number two um, should be um, should be defined. Uh, I, I would have put it in as understanding the legal legal concern, legal concerns around reparations, because when you limit it to individuals, we've already limited ourselves, uh, you know, almost almost entirely because of the legal concerns about direct payments the town can make to any individual. Uh, but I, 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 so I think that really, really, it's really important for us to have a discussion uh, around those legal issues surrounding our work. Uh, and that amount of, the amount of material that came through was incredibly great, dense, uh, definitely would uh, make you go asleep and fall up, fall, uh, come awake all at once, but uh, it is definitely something that we need to do. I can't, as uh, for myself, I can't see how we go ahead without doing number two first. Mm. Okay, that's, that's great feedback. Any other folks? Oh yeah, Michelle. I, I had a similar thought myself that um, starting with um, le the legal opinion that we received is going to be fundamental in terms of how we can move forward. I sort of saw number one and number two as items that we could begin to group off into and work on. Um, and then, and I also just, I want to second what Herb said, this really helped me to get my head around everything that we have to accomplish um, in our charge. So I thank you for putting this together. And um, I would like to see us focus on one and two um, kind of simultaneously in smaller groups if possible, uh, and then move on to those other items as they arise. Herb, did you have another comment? Oh, you're still on mute. I, I just want to say, I really, I um, want to second what Michelle, Michelle said. And when I look at this, what you put together as in, in total, um, there are cer certain things that uh, need to be done almost simultaneously because we're looking at you know, who's eligible. Well, eligibility obviously uh, dovetails in with uh, number two uh, and also number one. So it's th these things have to be done, and 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 trying trying to sequence is going to be difficult. Uh, but I do think that we need to figure out this session what we are going to focus on uh, going forward uh, out of those those three items, the three items for me are number one, number two, and then the eligibility, who's eligible. Thank you, I think that's great to introduce that third bucket in there as well. Um, do other folks have any other reactions or thought? Uh, also, sorry, let me say Irv, that I, I absolutely agree that yes, I hope this is like this session, we can make sure everybody has some homework <laughs> to get those, uh, those three most two or three most important things done. Um, any other uh, reactions or thoughts or um, yeah, or responses to what's been said so far about this? I'm wondering if other people are hearing that uh, background talking. 
Is anyone else hearing that? Not anymore. Okay. I did. Yeah, it's gone away. But um, <laughs> good. All right. So then, um, uh, so Michelle Irv, as I said, I, I think I think you're right. I think this would be definitely the session. Um, uh, so there's sort of an idea that that one in two, or possibly one two, and I think eligibility is four. Um, but that those three buckets uh, need to be sort of worked on simultaneously. Um, does anyone have thoughts about? I mean, so I, I guess I don't like I don't know exactly how people can do that. Can people only work like one at a time or two at a time uh, on the side here? Paul, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, like on the number one, that's a really a tangible task that can be done. And I think if you had someone from the committee, I mean, uh, Mr. Rhodes is, has already sort of talked a lot about the financing, where the money would come from. This is about where the money would come from and what is the time frame. So we don't wanna miss any deadlines. I think if, if he worked with our finance director, Mr. Mangano, uh, they could come together and sort of chart out what are all the things that uh, are available, possible sources of revenue for the, for the reparations program, because that's filling up the bucket that we're talking about. And that there are, there are no legal impediments, as far as I know, um, to starting to fill that bucket up. Because the sooner we get started on that, we've you know we've already started, and there's some premonition of that happening. So I think um, Mr. Rhodes has worked with um, you know Mr. Mangano before, and they work well together. So that might be a task that for your next agenda item. I think for the legal research, um, the legal one, there's different things there for what. Um, what, are, what have other towns do, done? Uh, I think there's multiple tasks there. If you start to have people working together, it does get into the committee business. And I think it's just sometimes easier um, if you're not talking about logistics. Um, so, and I think you're right that the, the legal opinion from our town attorney was pretty, is pretty very dense and very uh, detailed. Um, so it could be that there's a follow-up with the attorney on that. Um, because I think that's really crucial to your understanding of your work. Um, I think it's really helpful to know what other towns have done and what uh, in other states. You know, I think that's where we may benefit from talking to Evanston and how did they figure things out. Our our state's rules may be different, um, and just other other places that have taken it on. So I think that's that's another set of tasks that, that some some folks can take on. So, but we do need to basically kind of take them on individually. Is that right? Unless you want to set up a committee that, yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, Irv? Yeah, I, I am uh, definitely um, interested in number one. And I think oh, I've great. Indicated that all indicated that all along. Um, yep. and I'm anxious to sit down with uh, Sean and Paul as soon as possible. Excellent. So can we uh, sort of formally consider that your your wheelhouse and uh, we'll put an agenda item on next week for you to report back if you've got anything or? Yeah, and that uh, in terms of reporting back next week really depends on two things. One, when the meeting is going to be and two, when I can sit down with Sean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> understood, Michelle. Yeah, and I would um, volunteer to work on the legal piece of things. I have a strong interest in this piece. Um, I think I, I, most of the questions that went to KP Law, I worked on. Um, I've also sent this to um, to Robin Rue Simmons for review, and um, Robin is very interested in. Um, being part of the dialogue and providing expertise and resources to us around what Evanston has done and what they've run into. Um, I certainly also would take a broad look at all of um, the other communities that are working on this. I know we have some community members potentially. Um, I think I'm identifying that there one, maybe one even here today um, that has a particular um, interest in this as well. So I, I would love to take this on with somebody else or on my own um, and also ask the group if we want to invite Robin at some point in the next couple weeks to talk to us about this and more generally. Um, I also will say uh, with respect to the law piece, um, 
I was directed through reparations for Amherst to um, an aide of Congressman McGovern, and it was suggested to me, um, this was um, the mother of an aide, the Northampton aide of Congressman McGovern. And so I reached out to Rep Dom, and um, we're also trying to talk about the possibility of a meeting. So I wanted to bring that to this group um, with respect to particularly the third recommendation that's in the legal opinion. So all of that said, I'm very invested in this piece of things and would be happy to take that on. We've had several hands come up. Um, so Dr. Shabazz. Yes, so I think that the uh, being up of these areas. First of all, I think these are fine. They've been identified. I think the divvying them up is is uh, is fine as well. But I think we need a little more discussion uh, beyond the the alphabetical bullet items of what we're actually what we're actually going for. I just uh, I'd like to be clear, for example, in uh, are we clear? Is there a consensus that goal is that we're sending, if it's heard out, to discuss and to bring back is the idea of creating a financial instrument that is based upon what is in the stabilization fund that was created, or if no. it hasn't been deposited to yet, what will be in that relation to an endowment at, at, at a certain amount. I don't know that we're clear that that's what we're talking about and, that, and, and whether we are at this point feel we're able to talk about what is an appropriate number as a goal for where we want, where we see building that fund? Is it a fund of 10 million? Is it a fund of 1 million? Is there, is it, so I just don't, uh, so that is one area. Are we clear that is what he, we're sending, we would be sending Erd out to discuss a, a, with respect to all of these bullet items, that it's about the creation of an endowed invested fund that rep, that reparative justice programs would be funded through. So I, I think Irv has a response. Did I miss another hand? Yeah. Though? I'm, okay. Yes, I do. I, I think that is, is really clear in terms of what what's, what 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 has been written here. Uh, and, it, and, I, and I look at it, it's the securing funding from 2023 budget and beyond. Understanding all sources we might be able to use. That's clear. Uh, second, understand the process paperwork required to apply for or earmark the, those sources. That's clear. Understand the timelines for each source. That's clear. Set a target for the amount of money to uh, to endow rep reparations, we can talk about that because that, that, that has to be uh, clarified. And do the math based on funding sources available. Decide on the amounts, apply for secure. You know, this has nothing to do with um, making any choices or making any of the decisions. It's about finding out all the ways in which we may be able to secure funds and where those funds could come from. Uh, the amounts and times, et cetera, can be reported about back to the committee. The committee then can do some work together in a live session to determine the path forward with all of those suggestions that uh, I would come back with. This is not something that is narrowing. It is something that is uh, uh, making it available for us to know exactly what is there and what is not there so we do not continue uh, to uh, lose an, uh, incredible amounts of time in terms of moving forward, uh, discussing this without having something that we can look at uh, in order to begin to form our decision, to inform our decisions. Dr. Shabazz? Yes, 
Thank you, uh, Irv. I gather that it still doesn't quite address what I'm raising. I'm raising that right now there is an implicit idea. And I'm asking, should we make that an explicit idea that we reach a consensus on? You know, the, the stabilization fund work was made toward doing that even before we were created as a body, as a public body. Um, the sending out to the attorneys to get a legal opinion, you know, that was, be, that was discussed and was being moved on even before we were created as a public body. So certain things have happened, you know, even prior to our being organized. But I'm saying now that we are organized, is there ever a point that we want to make explicit our understanding of what we're what we're we're we're, we're working toward? You, what I hear you saying is, let's just figure out where the buckets of money could come from, and then we'll we can decide down the road, or we can make explicit down the road if we're talking about uh, uh, creating a fund. And, and if that's where the body is at right now, you want to kick that can down the road, fine. I'm just asking, is there some point at which we actually discuss where we think this can is going instead of just kicking it down the road? All right. All right. So two things. I think we're talking past each other. Uh, one, what you're talking about is obviously one bucket of money that is possible. All right. Yes, that has been acted on by the council. We don't. We do not need to revisit that. In terms of what, uh, and I do not need to re revisit that because that's already been determined. What we're talking about are other sources of money in addition to the stabilization funds. And by the way, the stabilization fund, uh, when you look at it, uh, you know. Is it going, the question that comes to mind is, all right, is, are we just going to be, a, is it got, going to be a one-time deposit? Can it be uh, other monies be deposited into the stabilization fund? Of course they can, because I know that. Um, so yeah, so, but again, Emil, uh, what I want, uh, want you to understand is this is not being, dismissing the idea of the stabilization fund. It is getting other information and bringing other sources of funds to add to that particular bucket of funds so we can have different pockets of money that we can look at and make some decisions on. So nothing is being eliminated. And Dr. Shabazz, I, I want to hear from you again in a moment. I just wanted to, yeah. to jump in here. Um, so at the end of our last call, I actually, the discussion had gone in a direction I was, was really kind of excited about because uh, it seemed to me that folks were all on the same page that no matter what we do, it's going to require money. And there are time constraints on us securing any of that money, wherever it's coming from. And so um, I, I appreciate that what may be happening here is what I wrote might be causing some confusion because um, all I was trying to do was get us to act on the part where we're gonna need some money. Let's find out when we have to ask for it, what we have to tell them to get it, <laughs> and let's make sure we can have that coming in. Um, so, so, and then I guess I want to ask you to clarify, what is it that you feel is implicit that you would like made explicit? Thank you. I'm asking at some point, if we have a conversation about what we think our recommendation will be, possibly even uh, to have it explicit by the time of our end of October report, what do we think we are, are building toward financially? Are we assembling all of these money or idea is we're gonna recommend it all be spended, sp spent in one, in one fell swoop? Or are we projecting a kind of continuing, ongoing fund that is fund endowed extended period of time or an indefinite period of time? I just would like to know if we ever plan to have that conversation and if we plan to have it before our, our October report, just to give some sense of the direction we think we may be going with the 
uh, uh, to the to the council. Um, you know, because I've heard people getting excited about you know wanting to to gather the money in, and that and I understand the time uh, factors that press that. It's just a question of is there some point we're going to discuss whether that those funds that would be gathered, and we'd ask the council about gathering and approving taking steps to approve, is it going into something for a more indefinite um, payout or is it going, or, or is that not out uh, fund last? Okay, um, you're breaking up a bit. So let me just uh, make sure that I heard you and, and hopefully everybody else. So um, what you're wanting to clarify or have us discuss is whether or not this is like, we get a bucket of money, we spend it all, or we get a bucket of money and we're hoping to build instruments that we can use maybe not in perpetuity, but you know, for a prolonged period of time. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Excellent. And then Irv, sorry, you had a response? Good. I'm glad you said that uh, and you got that clarification because I, I think, yes, that's where we are headed, Dr. Shabazz. That's, that is the objective. Uh, and, 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 and there is some sense of urgency, not only because of the report, but because of the budget timeline. The budget timeline for the town really dictates a lot in terms of the timing of when we decide to do what we're going to do. So uh, to be clear, we're not only talking about what you just mentioned in terms of the stabilization fund, but we are also talking about other sources of funds some of those funds might be expended uh, in one fiscal year. Some of those funds might extend beyond the fiscal year and be a continuing source of funding. Uh, we would be, you know, some funds will be look, looking forward to obtaining would be funds that would be able to be sustainable from budget year to budget year. Thank you. Because the, if, if, I, if I may. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The, because the uh, public comment uh, from uh, Anna Devlin, uh, Devlin uh, Gautier becomes relevant to both this piece that I'm raising as well as even to the legal piece in the second area. And that is uh, us actually finding a way to look at the CPA model, the Community Preservation Act model and looking at um, how that is organized both financially and legally as a model for us to consider what it is we're predicting and what it is we may ask the council to, 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 to act upon. So I, I am personally uh, want to revisit that to say, I hope that is something we would look at whether through uh, an individual starting to look at it and bringing an analysis, um, uh, whether under the financial or under the legal, or whether we just want to de designate one of our meetings to, to have a sit down with, uh, with someone uh, from CPA to talk about that, that particular model uh, and how they're funded as well as how they are legally uh, uh, able to operate vis-a-vis -vis local uh, law and municipal law and state law. Thank you. Michelle? Alexis, would you like to go before me since you haven't had a chance to speak I, on this topic? Please. Um, I was just going to sort of piggyback off of Dr. Shabazz and almost ask like, are you or are, are we at all considering like the possibility of the creation of a fund specifically for this? and looking at the CPA like as a model for that? Uh, yes, Paul. that's... that's... Oh. Uh, sorry, yeah, Paul and then Dr. Shabazz and then Michelle. <laughs> I defer to Dr. Shabazz. Okay. My response is just quick, yes, it's, I see it as a model. Paul? Yeah, so, so the, the town council has set up a stabilization fund for it. So it's basically a bank account that where you can put money into, but there's no money in it now, right? So there's a fund there for reparation, but there's it's empty. 
So the next step is put money in it and where do you get the money to put in it? And that's the next, that's how I see that what Mr. Rhodes is going to do with the finance director is like, here are the different sources you, we can get. We can get ARPA money, we can get town taxpayer money, we can get CPA, whatever it is and say, and donations, can we, can we start to publicize people can make donations? And so let's start to fill up that account as the as the reparation committee as you start to decide well how are we going to distribute it what are our goals and stuff but we as mr rose said we don't want to miss any deadlines because the deadlines are coming up in like november december so let's i think you will want to know you would hate to miss a deadline of saying we want to request funds from this account and have missed that deadline i'm sorry thanks for the clarification mm -hmm. And I am adding that, you know, I think that there are short and medium and long-term goals as we approach this work. And so there is a budget cycle that we want to capture. Um, and we're doing this work for the long, you know, not just for the, the moment, but really this is an iterative process that we're going through. And so I think getting the information back, it seems to me like we're in an exploratory phase right now. And that's the work that Irv is going to do is to explore what the options are and then bring them back. And then at that point, this committee can have a discussion about short, medium and long-term goals um, that we can bring as recommendations to the town council. Uh, Dr. Shabazz. So thank you. I think I'm hearing in relation to my original question that yes, at some point, a, a discussion is envisioned where we talk about how these uh, the, these finances that we're gathering will, will, will what they're going to go toward, um, establishing long, short term, medium term, long term. So if that's, if that's the view I'm hearing, then, then that, that answers my, my original question. The, the one other thing I just comes up from what town manager was saying, uh, please rescue me if I'm wrong. But my understanding is, is that the council did also approve that free cash from last fiscal year of 200,000 plus is to be deposited sometime this October. Is that, am I, am I wrong on that? Yeah, so they, they did approve, but that, that hasn't actually happened yet because we haven't had free cash certified. So I, I think it's important to lay all that out so you can see where, where all the funds would come from and where the proposal was. and how to seed that account. So, then with that, I think uh, we got a clear charge for member uh, Irv Rhodes to, uh, to, to go out and address. Um, on, the, uh, on the legal then, uh, again, I I'm, I'm would support if that's an area that, that Michelle wants to, to look at. I just would raise or add that, again, relative to the CPA model, that is based upon state law, uh, the the and state law that then married with local law to to create an ongoing fund and an ongoing mechanism for uh, looking at proposals and distributing those funds. And uh, so again, I like that model. I I hope that in the legal investigations that are undertaken that um, that model could be studied. And if it requires statewide action, uh, well, it will require statewide action uh, to replicate that kind of model, that those discussions are going on. Uh, Kathleen Anderson and myself and some others were a part of a statewide conference and um, there is action being, being taken. Uh, Cambridge is getting ahead of us. Uh, other municipalities are getting ahead of us on uh, look at, looking into these matters, and they are already beginning to generate um, uh, proposals for state legislators to begin to consider how to create a similar kind of, of legal framework as is created for the Community Preservation Act. 
So I would hope that in the legal study uh, that efforts would be made to to specifically uh, think about and look at that aspect. If you're speaking with Mindy Dom, if you're speaking with Joe Comerford to, to look into that particular aspect of how state law can help us. And rather than us being particularly reactive to KP law uh, analysis and opinion, let's get ahead of that and look at how do we create the, the environment where uh, uh, state law enables us and facilitates us to do what it is we, we, we want and need to do. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Um, <laughs> Michelle, you, you're so charged. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'll just say that Dr. Shabazz, I don't actually know, and maybe Paul or Jennifer can clarify. It was my understanding that two people could work before it became a committee. Is no. that, that's not true. It's. No. Not possible. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to let Dr. Shabazz know that I heard everything he just said. I took notes and um, I I got it. And I will throw myself into the mix here. And like, if I can help on a different aspect, Michelle, like you won't, you do your thing. I'll do a different bullet point or whatever. I'm more than happy to get involved with the legal uh, piece of piece of this um, since that and the, um, financial seem to be most urgent to work on in parallel. Uh, Dr. Shabazz. No, I should have taken my hand down. I'm, oh, I'm okay. Just <laughs> no worries. Um, so uh, Irv did also propose, um, and this goes back to the item we were discussing previously, um, he did propose that eligibility may be sort of the third thing that we could sort of work on in parallel um, and in particular, there is kind of this question out there whether or not um, uh, this this particular committee uh, would, should should take over the the census uh, from BAM. So I I didn't want to leave that undiscussed. If there are further thoughts, and maybe we should think about how that is an actionable item for for our, our next discussion to make sure that that gets covered. So. Um, so I guess first, are there folks who sort of like saw eligibility, felt that it was important and would like to do some work on that or towards that next week? Um, Dr. Shabazz. So for, uh, for me, I guess this is where I would uh, insert the, again, the model of, um, of CPA um, that residents, African-American, African heritage residents would be able to, um, to submit projects uh, in the similar way as the CPA model, uh, uh, projects of relevance to African heritage people and addressing harms and addressing um, uh, the, the repair in the context of reparative justice. And there would be a body set up to, uh, to recommend to approve those, uh, uh, those projects. Um, uh, or vet or, and discuss those projects with people and vet them and uh, and try to get them to a place where they could be approved. So if again, if that's consistent with our thinking, then I don't mind uh, trying to to look more deeply in that area, talk to Anna Devlin and and others with CPA to to understand their model. But for me, then that that then begins to skirt the whole question of um, you know getting into, uh, blood quantum and genealogy and, and all these other matters that I think are relevant matters at the federal level and at the level of true reparations uh, as relates to slavery um, and, and anti-Black racism. But, but at the level in which we're envisioning on, on, on this uh, municipal level, I think that uh, that area can really be uh, uh, taken care of by looking at a model like CPA. Great, thank you. Uh, Irv. Yeah, um, Dr. Sebez, I absolutely resonate with what you're saying. However, when I look at the legal land landscape um, that would impact upon what you're talking about, I believe that it would be fruitful uh, for you uh, to, um, well, actually right now, that legal framework and understanding all the legalities around what we can or cannot do 
and is really important because when I hear what I when I really listen to what you're saying, I say that's really a great idea. The CPA model is great, but is it possible to use the CPA mo uh, model to disperse funds for a project strictly to African Americans? And everything that I've read says no, we can't do that. Uh, however, if we said low income, yes, we can do that. So anyway, there you go. Quick follow up to say I leave that to the to the legal bucket group. <laughs> I'm just going to look at. Or I'm really I'm just trying to squeak in federation a model uh, under under item three. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so I guess I'm going to take one last call for uh, anything on on the sort of work work process or any of these items uh, for people to volunteer or respond. And then I'd like to move on to Michelle's uh, last items. Um, Alexis, yes. Um, I can volunteer um, to do some work um, around legal stuff and whatnot on, on eligibility. Um, awesome. If, yeah. Um, I also can, well, I don't, I don't know if we're still talking about the census. Um, yeah, go ahead. If you've got comments on the census, please. Um, I mean, I would love to be able to take some of the like labor off of BAM if possible, especially if especially like if we have funding to do so, like I feel like that sort of like is part of what we should be doing um, in like using funds to be able to help with that. Um, but I also don't want to like, like step on any toes, you know, and I, I think that BAM should also uh, like agree if, if they want to be able to hand that off. Um, so in, in, in any way that's helpful, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to help out with the creation of that if everyone, if, if that is the, the agreed upon decision. Awesome, thank you. Dr. Shabazz? Uh, so just looking at the, the topic areas then, um, I think then maybe I would look more at vision the uh, item three, if Alexis would move more in, in area four. And on that uh, issue with, with Alexis on area four, I don't think it's it's a, uh, a problem with your skill set in terms of helping in the development of a website and helping in development way to, to get some outreach uh, going in the community as well as a database through which some outreach can happen in terms of a postcard, in terms of a letter to everyone. Um, is there, uh, but in terms of the budget question, is, is there still a couple of things around uh, uh, Paul, um, town manager, Bokelman? Uh, and if so, is, and is an individual from this body, uh, Alexis, able to receive that to use toward toward offsetting costs to, to get some of this work done. So for any expenditures, uh, there are funds available. We, we, we would have to go through a procurement process. So all of our work has to follow up procurement laws. Um, so I think the first thing you'd wanna do is say, what do we need to do? And what are the, what are the tasks, tasks um, that we, you know, if it is developing, you know, coming up with census, that might be a, a pretty good task that we would identify um, and then we go out and follow our normal procurement rules for securing those services. Alternatively to that, that too, Paul, is there a way, if there were any existing uh, way it help um, from within the town, the town clerk's office or within your, your bailiwick in terms of, I know there, there are voter, there's voter data if, if some people could, could come in and sit down with, um, from BAM, who, who know, who have a long history, recognize names, is there possible to get like that? 
well, you were breaking up a bit, Dr. Shabazz, but I think what you're asking is, um, can people come in and access public records? And that's clearly, yes, that's the case. Um, I know the town clerk's office is preparing for the election on November 2nd, so they're pretty swamped right now. And there's early voting coming in three weeks, but yes, those are all public records that are available um, for people to review at their convenience. So Alexis, um, if, if uh, I can sing votes, I won't look for a response. I guess it's okay for one member of this body to at least send information to another member of this body without it constituting a deliberation. But, um, uh, or if I need to send it through Jennifer, I can send it through Jennifer, but I can share with you notes of, of what we've done. And, um, and, and I had set out you know, scope of services that we'd worked out with, uh, with the town and, and maybe you can take the ball from there. Yeah, <laughs> I try to look at you for the eye. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh. Just one clip. Oh, Hala, yes. Um, everybody else on the committee has volunteered, and I'm sorry I didn't jump forward. I'm doing something else as well, um, but I'm happy to work and volunteer wherever we have an empty spot. Just for FY. Thank you so much, Hala. We really appreciate that and totally understand um, if something like if you have a if you do have a chance to review the document and something comes up um she's allowed to just tell michelle or i like i'd like to do this right yeah so just send us a note um and also you know i think the the documentary idea like even just fleshing that out that's sort of like kind of six but i feel like that that that's the kind of thing that would take some some lead time so if you feel like thinking that through that's that's a great start as well so thank you yeah, that was really inspiring. So, um, Paul, just a quick um, follow up. Is it, can a member of a committee receive payment through the procurement process? Like for example, if Alexis knew how to build a website for BAM, could Alexis be paid through the procurement process being that she is also a committee member? Um, is that a conflict of sorts or is that a possibility? Um, we'd have to look into that. Could be a conflict. Um, uh, again, we'd have to follow procurement rules. So if you said we want a website, we'd probably go out into the market and say, we need a website that does this and see who bid on it. And then if, if then I think that sort of insulates you somewhat and from the, but so if someone comes forward and says, I can do a website that meets all your requirements, at a lower cost. Um, I think just for optics, you might be better off keeping it out of committee members' hands. Um, just, yeah. But whether it's totally illegal or not, if we go through a procurement, I can't, I can't say that. I'd have to look into that. Okay, no problem. Um, Irv? Irv, you're muted. Or if you're is muted, there, is there, there is, Paul, is there uh, a certain amount of money that can be expended without going through a, procure, a procurement process? So there are different levels, you know, um, there's like under a thousand dollars and from 1000 to $10,000 and over 10,000 to 50,000. So there are different requirements at different levels. Um, and I think, you know, if we bring uh, Mr. Mangano into our, your next meeting, he's the, our right now serving as our chief procurement person he can walk us through those things all right i mean it is important because I, I i do remember some of those in my mind but i'm so I'm yeah so some, so some of them you can get three verbal quotes some of them you need three written quotes some of them you have to post in a newspaper it depends on the um the dollar amount that you think the project is going to cost all right so I, you know we can we can leave that until after i meet uh, with sean because okay. i think that's an important discussion yep. to have. Yeah. And I just wonder along these lines, if Irv or Dr. Shabazz or Hala um, would be able to make contact with BAM now or sooner, maybe, I don't know when your next meeting is, 
but to see if there is interest in having this committee develop that census or work on that census so that then we can add that um, to our agenda for maybe even the next meeting to flesh out how that's going to happen and uh, work with Paul in terms of the procurement process. Dr. Shabazz, are you, can you still hear, hear the conversation? I can still hear. Sometimes I'm inaudible. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Then yes, I will, 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 will take that up with, with Bam. I think, uh, the, uh, the, the, the creation of the means to reach out to people is one part of the task. And I don't think Bam has a problem with how, how that gets done. The second part is who's making the outreach. And I think that that would be another area for, for consideration for them to talk about. I think part of what they're, they're hoping to do is, is when, is is to convene to use that list to try to convene a kind of a, a, a conversation within the black community uh, by the black community by the African heritage community. So in that regards, then no, that would be an area I think they'd more want to take charge of. But the creation of the of the the database, the creation of the way to get that word out to convene the people, I don't think they'd have a pro problem with how how that gets done. Great. So just let uh, Dr. Jemison and I know, and we'll add that for next week's agenda once you've had a chance to have that conversation. <clears throat> um, and sorry, one more follow-up question before we move on really quickly. <laughs> Paul or Jennifer, is there anything that... Um, is, is there any issue with a member of this body working with a skilled member of the community? Like... We have somebody, I think she may be here today, who has legal expertise. Um, and so if I were to work with that member of the community, is that is there any problem with respect to that? No, I mean, if it's volunteer work, you can consult with whoever you'd like. Right. All right. So <laughs> time to move on um, to, we have member reports as the next item on the agenda. Um, are there any member reports? Heather oh, or Hala? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought I saw a hand. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, and then we have upcoming events. I don't know if there are any events, Jennifer, that um, you want to communicate that are relevant here. I don't, Dr. Jemison, I don't have any in mind. We didn't quite cover that piece. No, <laughs> me either. <laughs> okay, nothing. All right, great. All right, and uh, the next item is <laughs> setting our next meeting date, which um it's always fun <laughs> so um if we're looking to meet oh go ahead dr Johnson. i was just going to say can i can i ask just in general for folks did it go better when michelle and i kind of came down to a few narrow things and then asked or do you like to be in this moment checking calendars and <laughs> grooving away on this Because I'm happy for us to take the burden and you know come up with three possibilities, sort of thing, if that's easier. Alexis. Um, my thing always sort of stays the same. I would enjoy it if we could be after six, six or six or later. Um, I'll make it at six if we need to. Um, but but yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we sort of <laughs> kind of we kind of came into a crunch and part of that was due to my schedule this week. So thanks everyone for being flexible. Um, anybody else like want to go through the pain of scheduling now or, or and also Michelle feel like if you want to share this, like we can be insistent, but <laughs> I think it would be good for, I don't mind doing the, the work at all to send out some dates and, but if there are any times that people 
know they can't meet next week. For example, Jennifer, I think you have a community safety working group meeting next Thursday. Are there, I, Paul, there is not, we will not be meeting on Monday because it's Indigenous Peoples Day. So we have basically Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday to work with. And Hala, I see you have school committee? On Tuesday. On Tuesday, okay. How about Wednesday? <laughs> How does Wednesday look for people at 615? Um, not for me. Not good? Not good. That's the uh, night of the uh, legal. Oh, our of you are muted. It's the Thank night. Thank you, Irv. <laughs> School committee candidates. League of Women yeah. Voters. Yeah. Okay, then you both definitely cannot yeah. be here. We definitely will not be there. Okay, so that leaves us with um, overlapping on Thursday, um, which would not be ideal for Jennifer. Yes, Alexis. Sorry, I just wanted to check in. Are you sure the League of Women Voters is on the 13th and not the 14th? It's, it's the, the 14th. It's the 14th, oh, which I is we were Thursday. Just talking about, yeah, I thought we were just talking about Wednesday. I could be wrong. Oh, maybe I'm totally wrong. So I think that's how it was understood. Oh, yeah, I think Alexis is right. We were talking about the 13th being Wednesday. So is is the League of Women Voters School Committee, can, uh, is it on the 13th or 14th? 14th. 14th. OK. So is the 13th then, I'm just checking, I there's a candidate forum for my district too, and I'm trying to see when that is, but um, is Wednesday at 6.15 then the 13th, is that a possibility for everybody? Thumbs up if it is. <laughs> okay, uh, and Dr. Shabazz and Hala, is that good for you? Say the date again. It would be Wednesday the 13th at 6.15. Yes, I think that's okay for me. Okay, and Paul, I, I know you're not required to join, but if you're available, okay. Um, and how about you, Jennifer? Is that possible for you? Um, yeah, but I believe that I have to post an agenda today because Monday's a holiday, so I just need those items now. I, if you if I get off of this call, I which I don't have to necessarily be on here, I can post the agenda with the clerk's office, but it does need to be posted by I have to do it by 425. Yeah. Great catch. They get mad yes. when I do it at 428. <laughs> Very good catch. Um, okay. Do you, um, Dr. Jemison, do you have a few minutes to stay on with Jennifer? I was just gonna say, yeah, let's do that. Oh. Yep. Okay, that would be great. And before we go though, um, well, we do have to move to any other topics not anticipated by the chair, um, but before we do, is there any specific agenda items that you would like to have added that you know about right now, other than what we've discussed? Okay, great. Um, and so then let's move to other, are there any topics the chair did not reasonably anticipate? Um, this co-chair doesn't have any topics. Um, I don't know, Dr. Jemison. I do not. Okay. All right, then I think we can move to end the meeting. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Great meeting, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, just trying to check my notes because I definitely wrote. <laughs> um, uh, it only took me to look, to forget one, to post a meeting once for me to be like super on top of. I was talking to Paul because he just woke by and said, walked by and said, I'm so glad that you thought of that. And I'm like, yeah. it really took one meeting for me to forget <laughs> to post one time during like town meeting time and then they had to have the meeting during town meeting and it just caused all kinds of ruckus so I just am very like meeting posting meeting I'm posting. aware we have a few One participants yes. still on here yes and we're I mean, still recording maybe we can so uh, I can unrecord because we're not